special skill to build a Grand National race car. And it takes special skills to service today's complex vehicles. It means keeping up with changing technology and learning about the new Chevrolets that'll be appearing in your dealerships. To help you keep up with some of these changes, the remainder of this program will tell you about the new four-cylinder diesel engines that Chevrolet introduced in mid-1981. It will examine their new features and some of the important service procedures. When servicing these new engines, just remember, quality workmanship counts. It makes Dave Marcus a winner. It'll make you a winner, too. With today's emphasis on fuel economy, Chevrolet is once again leading the way. For 1982, all across America, the Chevrolet Chevette and the Chevrolet Love Truck are available with efficient four-cylinder diesel engines. The engine in the Chevette is an inline four-cylinder diesel that uses an overhead camshaft to actuate the valves, making it a little different from the diesel engines you're used to working on. This engine is available only in Chevette and displaces 1.8 liters. The engine in the Love is also an inline four-cylinder diesel, but it uses the more conventional pushrod actuated valves and it displaces 2.2 liters. This 2.2 liter engine is available only in the Love. Now that you've seen these two new diesel engines, I'm sure you have a lot of questions about them. So in this service story on four-cylinder diesel engines, we'll cover the design highlights, the fuel system and electrical system, 1.8 liter fuel injection pump removal and replacement, and 1.8 liter fuel injection pump timing. First, let's take a look at the design highlights of the 1.8 liter engine. The 1.8 liter engine is an inline four-cylinder diesel with an overhead camshaft. Other design features include a belt-driven camshaft and fuel injection pump, an oil jet pipe that sprays pressurized oil to cool the underside of the pistons, an external engine oil cooler, and an engine mounting damper to help absorb engine vibrations. Now let's look at the design highlights of the 2.2 liter diesel engine. Just like the 1.8, the 2.2 liter diesel features an oil jet pipe. This oil jet pipe supplies pressurized oil to help keep the pistons cool. Some other design features are a road draft tube as part of the crankcase ventilation system, a trochoid design oil pump on two-wheel drive models, and a gear type oil pump on four-wheel drive models. The reason that a trochoid design pump is used on two-wheel drive loves and a gear type pump on four-wheel drive loves is simply because of space. The four-wheel drive models have a different design oil pan than the two-wheel drive models. And it was found that a gear type pump worked best in this application. So as you can see, all of these components add up to an engine with a lot of built-in durability. Now let's examine the fuel system. Since both the 1.8 and 2.2 liter diesel engines share the same basic fuel system, we'll differentiate between the two systems only when necessary. The fuel injection pump used on these engines is made by Diesel Kiki. It's a distributor type pump with one delivery port per cylinder. It's also equipped with an internal feed pump. This enables the pump to draw its own fuel from the fuel tank. You should also note that a return line routes excess fuel back to the fuel tank. This is because the feed pump has to supply enough fuel for engine operation and to cool and lubricate the fuel injection pump. This is an aneroid compensator. Its job is to vary the fuel flow according to changes in barometric pressure, which changes with altitude. The aneroid compensator is used only on the fuel injection pump on love trucks. You should be aware that the diesel Kiki fuel injection pump will not be serviced at the dealership level. If a problem is traced to the fuel injection pump, install an off-the-shelf pump and send the original pump to an authorized diesel Kiki service outlet. This is the return form you'll be using when you send the pump to a diesel Kiki service outlet. It's the same form you use for Rusa Master pumps. When you fill out the form, be sure to include the dealer code and the nature of the complaint. If you're specific about pump complaints, the service outlet will be able to diagnose, repair, and return the pump faster. This is the water separator. As its name implies, it separates water from the fuel, but it also filters the fuel using a replaceable element 
and warns the driver if water accumulates in the filter. To do this, a water sensing switch is located in the separator. When the amount of water in the separator reaches a predetermined level, the switch closes, sending a signal to the warning light on the instrument panel. The warning light is designed to come on before water has a chance to pass through the fuel injection pump to the engine. To drain the water separator, just unscrew the fitting at the bottom of the separator about five turns. Then, using the priming handle, pump the water out until fuel comes out of the drain hose. This purges the separator of any water. Then, close the drain. The priming handle can also be used to prime the fuel injection pump if the vehicle runs out of fuel or following service of the filter, injection pump, or fuel lines. The Chevette also has a water in fuel tank sensor which will light the water in fuel light if a large quantity of water accumulates in the fuel tank. A fuel tank drain plug is provided on love models if fuel tank drainage becomes necessary. On Chevette, you'll have to siphon out the old fuel and water through the fuel return pipe or remove the fuel tank to drain it. You should note that neither of these diesel engines use an inline fuel heater. This makes the quality of the fuel very important. If its cloud point is too low, the fuel filter will plug, stopping the engine. And remember, a diesel engine relies on a good grade of fuel to operate properly. Very often, bad fuel is the cause of an engine operational problem. So be sure that the fuel is of good quality and of the recommended grade before you attempt to diagnose an engine operational problem. Now let's take a closer look at the electrical system. A gear reduction starter motor comes with both the 1.8 and 2.2 liter diesel engines. A gear reduction starter can be smaller and lighter than a conventional starter, yet provides more torque to turn the engine over. A gear reduction starter motor works like a manual transmission. The ratio between the primary gear and the secondary gear help increase the cranking torque of the starter. This is especially important with a diesel engine. This extra heavy-duty Delco Freedom II battery and 400-watt engine block heater help these engines start easier in cold weather. The cord for the engine block heater can be found coiled up under the hood, and it plugs into any 110-volt AC outlet. Another new feature with these engines is an alternator with an integral vacuum pump. The vacuum pump supplies vacuum for operation of the power brakes and various other accessories. The vacuum pump is driven by the alternator shaft and is lubricated with engine oil. An oil pressure line runs from the engine block to the rear of the vacuum pump. Oil and air is returned to the engine through this return line to the oil pan. Now let's move on to 1.8 liter fuel injection pump removal and replacement. The reason we're covering the 1.8 liter engine is because it uses four more pulleys than the 2.2 liter and its belt timing procedure is more complex than that of the 2.2. And for clarity, the following service procedures will be shown with the engine on an engine stand. So let's begin the fuel injection pump removal and replacement. To remove the injection pump, first, disconnect the battery negative cable. Drain the cooling system and remove the fan shroud, radiator, and the coolant recovery bottle. When you've done this, remove the upper dust cover retaining bolts and the upper dust cover. Now loosen the tension pulley retaining bolts and remove the tension pulley leaf spring. At this point, you can remove the fuel injection pump pulley lock nut and remove the injection pump pulley using puller tool number J22888. Disconnect the appropriate hoses, wires, and cables from the pump and remove the injector lines. Be sure to cap all open fuel lines and hoses to prevent the entry of dirt. Also remove the four bolts securing the pump rear bracket and remove the bracket. Finally, remove the nuts from the pump flange and remove the injection pump together with the fast idle device and return spring. To install the replacement pump, Position the nose of the pump through the front bracket and loosely install the flange nuts. Install a rear bracket and attaching bolts to the rear of the pump and the engine block. Tighten the bolts in the proper sequence 
beginning with the upper block bolt, lower block bolt, upper pump bolt, and lower pump bolt. Install the injection pump pulley using the keyway. Then rotate the pulley until the mark on the pulley and the mark on the plate are aligned with each other. Use the lock bolt to keep the pulley from turning and install a lock nut. Torque the lock nut to 45 foot-pounds torque. Now remove the cam cover. At this point, make sure that the piston in cylinder number one is at TDC by checking that the timing mark on the crankshaft pulley aligns with the timing pointer on the bottom of the engine and that both valves of cylinder number one are closed. Slide the camshaft fixing plate, tool number J29761, into the slot in the rear of the camshaft. The fixing plate indexes the camshaft and prevents it from rotating. This is very important since the camshaft pulley doesn't use a keyway for indexing. Next, remove the camshaft pulley retaining bolt and remove the camshaft pulley using puller tool number J22888. Now reinstall a camshaft gear loosely so that it can be rotated by hand and thread the timing belt around the pulleys. When the timing belt is installed, be sure that the belt is properly tensioned between the pulleys. The belt cogs properly engage the pulleys and you concentrate the belt slack toward the tension pulley. When the belt slack is concentrated near the tension pulley, push the tension pulley against the belt and install the tension leaf spring. Semi-tighten the tension pulley plate bolts in this sequence, the upper bolt first, then the lower bolt. This prevents the tension pulley from moving. Now torque the camshaft pulley bolt to 45 foot-pounds. Then remove the injection pump gear lock bolt. Remove the fixing plate from the rear of the camshaft. Check that the piston in cylinder number one is still at top dead center. Do not turn the crankshaft in an attempt to make an adjustment. And check that the mark on the injection pump pulley aligns with the mark on the injection pump plate. Position the fixing plate into the rear of the camshaft to be sure the camshaft is still properly indexed. It should fit in smoothly. Then remove the plate and install the cam cover. Loosen the tension pulley plate bolts and make sure that the belt slack is centered near the tensioner. Now tighten the bolts in this sequence. The upper plate bolt, the lower plate bolt, then the tension pulley bolt. Finally, check the belt tension midway between the camshaft and fuel injection pump pulleys with tension gauge tool number J29771. Tension should be between 46 and 63 foot-pounds. Now let's take a look at 1.8 liter fuel injection pump timing. Begin the injection pump timing by bringing the piston in cylinder number one up to top dead center on the compression stroke. Remove the upper cover retaining bolts and remove the upper cover as was shown earlier. Also, check that the timing belt tension is between 46 and 63 foot-pounds. And check that the mark on the injection pump pulley aligns with the mark on the injection pump plate. Remove the cam cover. Then insert the fixing plate into the rear of the camshaft. It should fit in smoothly. Then remove the fixing plate. Remove the injection pump head screw and install dial indicator tool number J29763. Turn the crankshaft until the number one piston is between about 45 and 60 degrees before top dead center on the compression stroke. Set the dial indicator so you have at least one millimeter of preload, then calibrate the scale to zero. Turn the crankshaft slightly in both directions to be sure that the gauge is set to zero. If you take a close look at the damper pulley, you'll see a group of four notched lines. These are the lines you'll be using to set the fuel injection pump timing. 
Slowly turn the crankshaft in the normal direction of rotation until the 18 degree notch on the damper pulley, which is the center mark in the group of three, aligns with the pointer. And check that the dial indicator needle has traveled exactly one half a millimeter. If the dial indicator doesn't show a travel of half a millimeter, hold the crankshaft at 18 degrees before top dead center. Now, loosen the two nuts on the injection pump flange and the two bolts on the pump support. Move the injection pump to a point where the dial indicator gives a reading of half a millimeter and be sure to recheck the reading. Then tighten the two pump flange nuts and the two bolts on the pump support. This completes the fuel injection pump timing. Now you can remove the dial indicator and install the pump head screw using a new gasket. Finish the job by installing the cam cover, injection lines, upper dust cover, wires and hoses, coolant recovery bottle, radiator, fan shroud, and the battery negative cable. This completes our program on the 1.8 and 2.2 liter diesel engines. A good source of service information on these engines is available in the form of your service manual. Another good source of information is the reference booklet that comes with this program. It covers both the 1.8 and 2.2 liter diesel engines in detail and includes a section on diesel fuel. When you get a chance, take a good look at it. This is the ProTech Control Center. Good day.